on your side with breaking news and the Tri-State's most accurate forecast. This is 9 News at 6. Good evening. Ohio schools are in crisis. A nearly $2 billion cut in state funding has many districts laying off teachers. But what about those deciding who gets the ax? The superintendents. The I-team's Brendan Keefe discovered many are still accepting bonuses and perks while children lose busing, sports, and their teachers. Brendan? Carol and Clyde, five Southwest Ohio superintendents make more than the governor. Cincinnati. Mason, where Kevin Bright makes $167,000 plus a full pension retired from the same job. Winton Woods, Sycamore, and Indian Hill. Most of these superintendents don't pay Medicare taxes. None pay Social Security or, unlike teachers, one cent into their own retirement. laid off teachers line the halls of Princeton High School. They're here to teach a lesson, not to their students, but to their school board and superintendent walking by. When you cut numbers, you cut people, people with names and faces and families. I got to find out on my birthday this year. Eighth grade reading instructor Paul Ebert is among the 65 Princeton teachers laid off this year. The district began eliminating one out of every five of its teachers last year. Before for Princeton Superintendent Gary Pack collected a $10,000 bonus and signed a new contract giving him perks like a $550 a month car allowance. I'm not mad about losing my job. It's, I'm not. Uh, I'm mad about the fact that they're telling us um, they exhausted all means necessary and that this was the final option. And then they're writing contracts like this. Princeton City School District has never faced the financial crisis we are facing today. Last month, Dr. Pack announced reductions in busing. The taxpayers drive him to school, but some kids will have to walk. Preschool and gifted programs were cut in half. Preschool, even though it's recommended, it's not required. Gifted, even though we want to serve them, it's not part of the state budget. But what about his contract? The superintendent and board president refused our request for an interview, but said he won't take any reductions to his $140,000 a year salary, that $550 per month payment on his personal car, the $10,000 annuity the board pays, his $3,000 life insurance premiums annually, or his full medical benefits, including a $4,000 health care spending account. Both Dr. PAC and the board president say his $10,000 bonus this year is not out of the question. Well, I don't know how you take $10,000 for a district that's going downhill. The laid off teachers have calculated their superintendent's total compensation at nearly $227,000 a year. About that car allowance, Dr. Pack can spend the $550 a month however he chooses. He told us he drove 8,000 miles last year for the district. Quote, if you figure the mileage rate at about 50 cents a mile, plus oil changes, tires, maintenance of the vehicle, and depreciation, I believe. I may have gone in the hole. If he had taken the mileage reimbursement instead, Princeton taxpayers would have saved $2,600. Do you think, point blank, he should give back the car payment, he should defer the bonus and say, I'm not going to take it, just out of general principle? I think they need to cut a lot of things. And the last thing they need to worry about cutting right now is teachers. Leadership is when you make a sacrifice and you show the people your district that you're making it. It doesn't take any courage at all to to ask the, somebody else to make a sacrifice when you're driving around on their dime. Rich Hoffman lives in the Lakota School District, which cut $12 million from its budget and now requires high school students to pay $500 each just to play sports. Lakota believes that it had to spend $50,000 on just a search for the right candidate for a superintendent. And again, what is a superintendent? What do they do that merits a $50,000 search? Lakota's headhunter reported 78% of community members support offering market-based compensation to attract the best candidate for the district's open superintendent position. They're wanting to pretend that superintendents are you know, corporate executives and they're equal to you know, the bonuses that you might give an executive at, at a six-figure salary. Princeton's board president told us precisely that. A CEO of a company this size would make $400,000 or more a year. This is not a for-profit 
corporation. This is money that is funded by the taxpayers. Sharon Poe is a regular fixture at Mason school board meetings. I just feel like it's nothing more than greed and selfishness. They need to be paid a fair wage, but why should a superintendent make more than a governor whereas Mason's uh, superintendent makes more than any governor in the United States. That's true when you add to Dr. Kevin Bright's $167,000 annual salary an estimated $150,000 public pension after retiring as Mason's superintendent and getting rehired for the very same job just two days later. Nobody would allow you to do that. Only in government would you be allowed to do something like that. The double dipping, rehire, retire situation is nothing more than a way for people to score a whopping pay raise legally. This superintendent is living very well off your dime and you're struggling. Former Mason School Board member Jennifer Miller was the only one to vote against Dr. Bright retiring on paper to double dip. All they have to do is go back to the taxpayer and say, oh, it's for the children. We need your money. When in fact, they've totally mismanaged the money. Dr. Bright and the current board also refused to be interviewed on camera. But in a statement, the superintendent said, money isn't what motivates me or most superintendents, whether they have retired or not. My salary has been frozen since August 2008. I donated my $20,000 bonus back to the district in 2009 and gave up the opportunity to receive a bonus in 2010 and 2011. It is a potential savings to the district of $60,000. But the superintendent gave up those future bonuses at this very same 2009 meeting where he asked the board to allow him to start collecting that six-figure annual retirement and keep his job. Dr. Bright came to the board and asked for a change in his contract offering to forego his bonus opportunities for the next three years and we would add another year of retire rehire scenario to his contract. To be fair, Dr. Bright and some of the others signed their contracts before the cuts and layoffs began. This summer, Dr. Bright is voluntarily leaving Mason one year early to take another job. Yet the district says he will collect $43,000 in severance, enough to save one of the teachers he just picked to lose their job. But we are eliminating the 53 positions. We're hopeful that the people will still have jobs. He's had to do more with less, and I think that will continue with whoever takes his place. Laid off teacher Paul Ebert isn't thinking about all the superintendents who refuse to give up their perks. He's thinking of his 110 students. I mean, there's got to be a couple of kids that just you don't want to walk away from. I, I wish it was, I wish it was just a I wish it was just a couple kids. I wish it wasn't the overwhelming majority of the students that I had taught. Perhaps the biggest perk is that superintendents take home a much greater share of their pay than the private sector. Cincinnati, Mason, Winton Woods, and Sycamore pay 100% of their superintendents' Medicare taxes. Teachers don't pay into Social Security because they contribute 10% of their own salaries into their pension. But superintendents don't pay Social Security or into their pension because school boards pick up both the employer and employee contributions on behalf of their top administrators. Guys? A lot to think about in these times when teachers are being laid off. Brendan, how can a viewer find out how much their superintendent is making? And are there any solutions? Yeah, good questions. Right now on WCPO.com, we posted several of the full contracts, and you can search by district to see the base salary for every superintendent in Ohio, Kentucky, and Indiana, statewide. Pending legislation in Columbus would prevent school boards from paying their superintendent's share of retirement. Other bills would set a minimum retirement age of 60 with 35 years of service. Right now they can retire after 30 years no matter how old they are. There would also limit rehire, retire, double dipping. There's a bill in the House right now for mm. that. All right. Great report. Yeah. Great report. Thanks, guys. Good job. Absolutely.